Cool. Thanks, Zoe, and thanks everyone for coming. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about uh, data management. Now I know that doesn't might not sound like it's the most riveting topic, but I want to uh, try and highlight a couple of the challenges we've got going forward. So before I get going, just to set the scene, I want to uh, talk about a little little example here. So on the screen, uh, you'll see uh, three blast hole rigs. Now you know, there's something really neat about these, right? These rigs are not regular blast hole rigs, they're autonomous, right? They have the ability to drive around the pit floor and drill to a plan. And that's a pretty serious uh, piece of innovation right there. And, and more and more we're seeing this sort of uh, technology being rolled out. But you know, and traditionally, uh, you know, you drill your blast holes and you would send a geologist out to log the piles, right? To collect samples, to log the geology. But this is uh, different again. Right, uh, the data that's being collected from those rigs, such as you know, bit speed, rate of penetration, torque, uh, is then used with you know, machine learning to inform the logging. Right? And you also heard some talks uh, from Michael here today that you know, this is becoming more and more common. Right, geologists are informing the logging but not doing it, and and that's once again a really amazing piece of innovation. But once the logging's finished it ends up in a drill hole database. And after that, we hit a roadblock. Right? I'm hoping all of you out there in the audience are using implicit modeling to some degree. Right? But for some companies, they're not. They're manually drawing. Right? It's using explicit techniques. And that is a big roadblock. You've gone from what is fluid, dynamic processes to something which stops. And whether you're using implicit modeling or explicit modeling, the reality is, is that at that point, the way that you're managing data is ad hoc, it's file based. It relies on a person to move information to the next part of the process. And that is what is inhibiting, um, one of the things that's inhibiting us moving ahead. So I'm gonna talk a little bit uh, more about the problem today. And I'm gonna highlight an example from another industry and talk a, a touch lightly on a solution. All right. So who here has uh, ever come across a file directory like that? Yeah? Yeah, there's some hands, I know it's... Right, so this is an example of uh, how data is managed uh, in a more of an ad hoc way. And within this data set, there's a whole range of different data types, right? We're looking here at the drill holes, I've selected them here. There's assorted CSV data, you know, uh, DXFs, which who knows, they may or may not be for the model. Um, we've got uh, parts of the block model, parameters, so on. Now, imagine if you were new to a company and you were confronted by that. Right? You have to try and understand you know, what's going on, figure out what software package it was uh, developed in, and then figure out how to open it and figure out how to utilize it. Right? And that there is an example of, of the challenge we see in the process. Right. So, I'm going to go out here and make a, a statement. So, the, I'd say the industry is really, really good at managing raw data. Right. We all have, well, for the most part, I want to say mostly. Does that work? Maybe not. Ah, so, mostly good, right? We all have, uh, we all work with drill hole databases. We have uh, people in roles that are dedicated to the safekeeping of raw information, right? We collect samples. We have all of the data about the data, who collected it, when they, when they did it, what uh, assay methods were used, what detection limits they have. We have all that information. But, how many decisions in mining are based on the raw data? Right? It's about the interpretation. Right? It's about the geological understanding that's applied to that information to build a model or a resource or whatever the output is. And the, once again, the challenge with that is that the way that that information is managed is ad hoc. Right? We're moving uh, data around manually and it's reliant on people to take it from one step to the next. So some of the challenges we've got there. Right? For a start, it's file-based. Right? Once again, relies on uh, people to move files around on a network drive. And there are some companies which are working on their own systems, which is really neat to see. Um, but there's also a lack of standards. Right? There's hundreds of file formats out there, uh, and some may or may not be open source and available uh, for people to access. Uh, security is a challenge. Right? We see. You, know, you hear horror stories of geologists losing their laptop and it had some information on it um, 
that's now gone. Right? Version management, right? Uh, how often do you look at a file system and you see you know, version one, version two, then oh, the final and my, my favorite, which is the, the final final, right? It's, right? We've all seen that. Uh, there's a rely on, reliance on expertise, right? Uh, we shouldn't, you know, your expertise should be in geology, not the way you manage files, right? <laughs> that, that, those are solved problems. And in the worst case, there can be knowledge loss, right? That uh, image I put up before of that really bad directory, right? The person who used that for the last resource, uh, you know, he, he knows his way around or she knows his way, her way around, but what about the next person who has to pick that up, right? You spend the first few days trying to figure out what's going on. Right. So I'm going to just leave that for a second and sort of go sideways a little bit. So the civil engineering is a really uh, interesting example. So previously we've learned a lot from them, right? Explicit modeling came out of the CAD modeling space and we adapted it with geological modeling tools uh, so that it could be used in the mining and exploration space. Now, data management for them is once again another, or has been another problem. And you know, when you're working on a large multi multidisciplinary project where you've got you know, geologists, engineers, uh, geotechs, you know, project managers, contractors, all working in the same place, they need to all be able to work around a single source of the data. Right? They all need to be able to uh, interchange information between each other. Now, they have a process called BIM, or Building Information Manager, and it's more of a, a methodology, but there are products as well that help with this. It's estimated that by 2020, 85% of the world's construction projects are all going to have a BIM system behind them. Right? Once again, uh, it's, it's really to do with the way they're managing, sharing, collaborating, and working around that information. All right. So what makes a good system? For a start, it has to be centralized. Right? Has to, you have to have your data in one place and have one copy of it. Right? It has to be accessible. Everyone in your project team who needs it within your company who, who should have access to it, should. Right, uh, it needs to be collaborative, right? We're seeing, it's not often anymore that you work on a project just by yourself. Uh, we see teams of people working around the same information, experts uh, that aren't necessarily on site needing to be able to be involved and chime in when needed. Must be secure, right? Security is really important uh, for data for some of the reasons I just mentioned. And Version control, right? Everything we do should have version control behind it. It should be built in from the get-go. There should be just no question about it. If you want to go back to the version that you had last week because you made a mistake, you should be able to. And interoperability, right? There's, geologists shouldn't spend time uh, working, uh, watching a file import, right? I, uh, at the Lyceum up in uh, Vancouver last, last week, a uh, really interesting example of one of the pres uh, presenters, he said, I don't want to pay my geologist $1,000 know, a day to spend half an hour importing a file, right? There's just no, no time for that. So, that's what makes a good system. I'm gonna just touch really briefly on something we're working on with Central, but, but really it's about those, that bigger question, right? Uh, around how we manage data. So, with Central, right, we are looking at how we can add uh, better data management to our modeling products, right? How we can enable uh, collaboration, how we can give more confidence in the process, and how we can uh, turn these models, which are you know, traditionally been static, go from one to the next, into something that actually lives over the life of a project. Because mining doesn't, you know, demand doesn't stop and start, right? These projects live for 20 years, and we should be able to access the information throughout that period. And we do that uh, by publishing results to a yeah, uh, server, but uh, there's plenty of other options there as well. So, as I said, version control should be a given. Right? It should be front and center. That's why we're putting it behind all of our products now. Right? And it enables things like us to be able to understand how change happens, right? I can start to actually see, a, see the information, see the drill holes that were collected, understand the decisions that were made, right? And, yeah, see why changes have happened and who did it. One more, there we go. So, on that note, what are the next steps for us as an industry? Well, for a start, we have to standardize our formats. We have to be open with interoperability, right? There's some really great work being done by the Global Mining Group, with GMG, uh, around the open mining format, or OMF. Uh, we support on our products, there's a few other 
software products out there supporting it. Um, but it's one of those things that actually you, the users, the customers of these other companies have to push. You have to push them to support uh, standard open formats. We need to be able to support more data types. We need to see more and more information in 3D. And if we can do this, we can really enable dynamic workflows from where it's collected to the interpretation that's happening by the geologist to whatever's happening down the line. All right, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, we've got a few minutes for questions here as well, if anyone would like to ask any. One over in the back. With the interoperability, um, I see that as quite a, the file formats, I see as quite an archaic thing. Sure. And API has been the future, right? And I really like what I'm hearing about, yep. like with mineralizer and things like that, that these people are looking to directly live input data. And I think um, if LeapFrog are continuing down that track, that's definitely the way. But if you've got anything else to comment on, on, on partnership and things like that. Yeah, sure. Um, absolutely, right. Um, so obviously our products work on, uh, well, Central has an API behind it. Uh, we're absolutely looking at how we can take that uh, public for customers and partners to be able to use. Uh, but you're yeah, happy to chat on that later. Any other questions in the front here? Thanks, Lee Nicholas from Rio Tinto. Uh, we've been chatting to, to Jacob for quite a while about Central, and just wondering what the latest update is on putting other models into Central from other packages. You sort of touched on it a little bit. But sure, uh, I think I'm going to touch on it a little bit later on in the roadmap session. But um, we're, yes, absolutely, we want to uh, make Central more receptive to data. Right, we want to be able to upload information from. Uh, whatever package you're using, not everyone's using leapfrogs, particularly, you know, not everyone on your team. Uh, we hear examples from customers around things like, uh, you know, my engineers have got um, the latest as-built pit and I want to make sure I've got uh, that uh, stored, backed up version control so I can bring it to my model. So absolutely, we're looking at how we can bring um, data from other packages and we should have some stuff coming out, hopefully pretty soon. Cool. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thanks, Peter.